Hello Internet. I had a discussion with a fellow pilot the other day about the influence of externally mounted action cams like a GoPro for example. Some people are concerned about flight safety depending on where the camera is mounted. In order to get a feeling for what's going on in close proximity to the camera I ran some computer simulations with a NACA 2412 airfoil. This airfoil is found on many Cessna aircraft. First of all a disclaimer. This is not proper research and may not be seen as the truth of what's happening in detail. The sole purpose of this investigation is to get a feeling how the airflow is influenced by the camera, how these disturbances propagate and what the influence on other aircraft components may be that are located downstream. To keep things simple I cut a 2 meter long section from the wing and place the camera right in the middle on the lower side of the wing. Effects that occur close to the wingtip, for example wingtip vortices which cause induced drag and interactions with the fuselage close to the wing root cannot be simulated with this arrangement. However, the cam is placed about one meter from either end of the wing which ensures that the shortening of the wing has no influence on the flow field around the camera. For fundamental airfoil research, the far field mesh is typically extended to 100 times the cord length in order to ensure that the far field boundaries have negligible influence. Since I'm not interested in lift and drag coefficients, the domain is kept very small. However, to resolve vortices originating from the camera, the mesh density is increased significantly in a small box surrounding the camera. The unstructured mesh overall consists of roughly 11 million cells, of which about 80% are located in the box in close proximity to the camera. The wing surface is not covered with prism layers, hence the boundary layer and its transition from laminar to turbulent will not be reliably calculated in this simulation. I ran these simulations with ANSYS Fluent on a 12-core Intel Xeon machine with 32 gigs of RAM. The mesh has a size of 785 megabytes and one solution file for a single time step results to 2.46 gigabyte of disk space. The transient simulation's time step size is 0.1 seconds. A complete solution was written to the hard drive every 5 time steps. 50 seconds of physical time were simulated resulting in 100 files totaling 245 gigabyte. But now let's have a look at the results. This clip shows velocity in a slice cutting right through the camera. You notice the stagnation point at the leading edge and right in front of the camera. Furthermore, you can see that the flow is accelerated around the camera and a wake space is located just behind the cam. The flow detaches from the edges of the camera and forms a common vortex street. This is particularly well visible in this view from underneath. You notice that the flow is not at all symmetric although the geometry is. When we have a look at the turbulent kinetic energy, which is a measure for the strength of turbulence, it becomes apparent that the camera introduces a lot of it. However, the turbulence dissipates quickly behind the disturbance. This is an indication that even if, for example, the horizontal stabilizer is located a few meters downstream, the effect on it is marginal. Of course, the camera will add some drag and may cost you one or two knots of airspeed. As mentioned earlier, this method is not precise enough to give a good estimation on additional drag. However, we've seen that the potential influence on control surfaces is critical in no way whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks very much for watching and I'd like to know your experiences with externally mounted cameras. Did you notice any velocity decrease or anything else? Please let me know in the comments. And as always, happy landing!